All right, folks, Tim again here from uh, High and Cheap Deck. Today, uh, hey, this is kind of another rant session. Uh, I'm going to piss, bitch, and moan about the new Galaxy Note 9. Nothing wrong with this phone. What is wrong is the height and the way it's coming in and the obviousness of it. A couple of days ago, Samsung announced it. Here it comes. You can't buy it until a couple weeks from now, week and a half, I don't know, something like that. So, a bunch of reviewers already have hands on it. And there's a bunch of reviewers just showing you a bunch of crap video. Don't, don't buy any of those. Even some of the guys I recommend as uh, you know, reviewers you can trust have gotten a hold of one of these. I don't know how. Obviously, 200 subscribers here. They're not offering to send me anything. And I'm going to remove my glasses because we keep getting reflections from my screen in front of me. And you don't need to see those because it makes me look even more scary than I normally look. So, uh, there have been literally, well, there's actually a YouTube channel of reviews and unboxings, and it's 50 plus videos already. Okay. I am not going to tell you the details of what's coming. All I wanted to do was intro this and say, I already told you about this stuff back during the one plus six release. Which was insane. It's not as bad in the Samsung. But it's still pretty bad. And I, I'm guessing by the end of the weekend it'll be blown out of proportion. Everyone will be on the bandwagon for a $1,000 to $1,250 product. I'll mention that in the video because a lot of these reviewers and unboxers don't mention the damn price. So, at that point, we're going to go to the intro here. That's the director right over there. Cue it up. All right, folks, here we are. Tim back again after that little intro. Uh, I'm probably going to say some stuff that will offend some people, and I don't care. Uh, the point is, two days ago, we get a you know, Samsung unveiling. The Note 9. Oh, it's wondrous. It's amazing. And it, it, it's a very good phone. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this phone. Is it the best smartphone? Probably not, because that's a subjective manner. matter. It's what works for you, and do you really need it versus what the prices are. So let's go right into the prices right now. For the 128 gig storage version, and, and they do a micro SD card slot. With 8 gig of RAM, 1000 bucks. For the 512, we're talking 1,250, but you can expand it with micro SDs or a micro SD all the way up to a terabyte or more. I believe it's a terabyte. Um, sure, it's a freaking smartphone. How much crap are you storing on your phone? I mean, are you downloading all the porn on the internet and every video ever made on YouTube so you have something to watch when you're on an airplane? Probably not. You'll probably, most people can get by with 64 gigabytes of storage and maybe an extra 32 gig. The crap they really want to save and they want to put to the side so they don't accidentally delete it when they start clearing crap off their phone. So. We've got these prices. And I want to say it right up front. 
If you have a mid-range smartphone, it's been doing really good for you, and you never needed a stylus or even thought about how cool it would be to have a stylus. But yet you're considering because of all these videos buying a Note 9. These are, this was one search, folks. I did this a couple hours ago, but God knows how many there are now out there. Uh, if you're actually considering that and can't offer me a good reason why what you have now couldn't be replaced with something for maybe a hundred bucks more. You know, better processor, a little faster. You know, don't fall for the flagship crap, folks. That's a bunch of it. We'll get to what flagships really are. But let's just say, if you're even remotely considering a thousand dollar plus smartphone, for any other reason than the fact you had the previous version and you love it and you depend on it and you're used to using it and you can afford it, for the rest of us, remove your head from your ass, allow yourself to breathe, and then write down all the reasons you really need this one. If it's to play one game like Fortnite, uh, put your head back in your ass and just report for termination immediately. Um, it's one game. You know how many games you can buy for a thousand bucks? Okay. Now, let's get into why we have flagships. Oh, first, this day totally reminds me of when I did the video on the night of the OnePlus 6. Uh, they just went nutty with that, the reviewers. These reviewers somehow get a hold of these things a couple of days in advance, even though Samsung clearly stated it wasn't going to be available until the like, 22nd, 26th, something like that. But yet, all the hot and heavies got one. And they're probably listed in this list of listings. Uh, so, this guy is already doing a comparison. With last year's iPhone X, that's real fair. As much as I hate iPhones, you can't compare last year's iPhone to something you just came out with. That's like, you know, comparing the latest jet-powered aircraft in World War II to the very top-end propeller-driven aircraft. Really? whole lot of sense and there's shitloads of these out there folks. I mean it, it just boggles the mind and the unfortunate problem is now there are two guys that I watch and they both emphasize how expensive this phone was there's a lot of people never mention the price and right here there's a Samsung Note 9 topic with 50 plus videos in it already that's pretty much insane, just so you can get a slightly bigger phone with a stylus. Well, because I needed a stylus, I, I was thinking to myself, God, I need to be right on the screen of my phone because I can't afford a notepad and a pen, which I could go to Walgreens to get for 39 cents for both. And yeah, I know, somebody out there is going to be offended. So, before you're offended because you must have one of these, let's go back over the total number of these that normally sell, roughly, or the percentage of people who buy one. And I'm going off of the 2007 because I have, I, I found some numbers on how many were returned. About 20.1 million. Now let's take the population of the Earth, which is 3 billion. It's actually six, but we're going to cut it in half because I'm pretty sure half the population are children and they're not buying crap. That works out to 0.07% of the Earth's population. Well, 
0.07. Not even a tenth of a percent. No one said I was off by two digits. One percent. This isn't where Samsung makes it, right? It's not in the Galaxy S9. They're not even close to being their top seller. Oh, the way they make money is they make cheap phones for Asia, India, Malaysia, Southeastern, uh, or Southeast Asia, and other places where, and they sell them to Walmart and other places. That people who just need an Android but not the top of the line, because your grandma don't need a top of the line. No. Eight? Nope. But you go buy her a $180 Samsung. Of course. And you know why? Because you've seen the videos and read the hype about the flagship phones. Why do they make flagships? Well, let's go to the car industry. Here's a flagship. This is the flagship of American cars. Yes, this is a Ford GT. I, I just watched a video the other day, zero to 293 miles per hour from a standing start in one mile. And you're not gonna find many <coughs> street legal production cars burning gas with a V6 engine that can do that. Of course, this same exact version of the car won Le Mans, you know, when they brought it out in 2016. Okay. It, and I know the argument always is, well, it costs you know, billions to do the research and development on these flagships. Well, first off, it didn't cost them shit on the Note 9. They took the cameras off the S9. They're either using the Exynos or the Snapdragon uh, 845 off the S9. Or every other phone, quote, flagship out there. And even some non-flagships that cost half as much. Yep. Now they do come with 8 gig RAM. And I got, I got a huge kick. I don't remember who it was. But the other day a guy did an unboxing. And he goes, well, you really don't have the 8 gig RAM. But it makes it future-proof. This guy will be one of the first guys to get a, the next Note 10 or whatever they're going to call it next year. Tell them that, honey, you need to upgrade. Is your proof? I mean, if you're one of these people who fall for the having to buy a flagship, you're just suckered in like a bass to a worm on a hook. Every time. And... You don't need the 8 gig RAM. Apparently the 6 gig on the S9 Plus is plenty. And I'll, there's a boatload. A regular Galaxy Note or Galaxy S9 has 4 gig RAM. And there aren't really any complaints. And that is about all I have. I'm just trying to make a point here. This is all hype. Most of this is it helps out the reviewers. They got a free phone to hang on to for a few days. And it helps out Samsung. It's called imaging. You go to an auto show and you see this or that one or the black one over here sitting on the floor next to a Ford Fusion or an F-150. And in your head, what are you thinking? Damn. If they can do this, which they're losing money on left and right, they're not trying to make a profit off of that. They're writing this off as advertising. But you see that, and you think, well, damn, their pickup trucks and Ford Fusions and Ford Tauruses must be fantastic. There's no way to get the two out of your head. Same thing happens at smartphones. Okay. You know, like this is a four hundred thousand dollar car. The Note Nine is a one thousand or twelve hundred dollar phone, twelve fifty. Um, you can't afford either of those. But somewhere in the back of your head, if you're in India and you see an offer for two hundred dollars, you're like, well, it's the same company. Man. 
if she has nine. My God, it must be good. And that is the real reason they make flagships, folks. It's not to sell to you one percenters out there. And I guarantee everyone who leaves a comment, don't tell me about them needing to make a profit on this phone. This is strictly an advertising phone. And on this one, they're going to make money. Because they basically made a bigger S9 Plus by a tenth of an inch. And they have the stylus. And a couple gig of RAM. And more storage. But those are all components. They didn't have to do any research. They just went to the manufacturers and said, we need these instead of those chips. And we need that. And that's that. So, that's all I got for tonight. And if I've offended anyone, I don't care. But I would appreciate comments back on the how you feel about the overhyping from these phone companies. And then the unfair comparisons to like last year's cell phones. You know, as much as I hate Apple, I don't think it's fair to compare their older products to this newer one. And that's all I got. Later, bye. Please like and subscribe.